war against global warming needs to be won not only in the developed world, but also in the developing country. And on side proposition today, we believe that nuclear energy is not only not a solution, but pushes us further away from that ultimate target. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to prove to this speech today, so first of all, I'm going to prove to you the act of harm that nuclear energy is causing, and second of all, on how re renewable energy is rising as a viable alternative towards what nuclear energy my second speaker is then going to further that on this and tell you why the international community agrees with us on every single principle we propose to you today. And ultimately, we'll prove to you how this is a harmful project that could be easily replaced and should be abandoned. So ladies and gentlemen, what are we actually proposing? What is this motion all about? <laughs> now we're talking about nuclear energy. We're talking about nuclear power plants that are used specifically for civilian use for only energy reduction. We talk about abandoning it. We're, we're talking about how we won't start any new projects. We'll allow the existing projects to run their course and we'll start a program of gradual replacement with renewable energy all across the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically what we're proposing. No, thank you, sir. Very simple. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin with the active harms in nuclear energy, energy actually as reduced. First point is on the idea of nuclear mining. Now, a lot of people say that nuclear energy is the safest form of production in the world. No, ladies and gentlemen, not at all. On side opposition, we recognize that every time you want to produce nuclear energy, you need to start with nuclear or uranium. Now, in this production process, even though there are nuclear power plants all around the world, they're still getting nuclear ore from three major countries, South Africa, China, and Australia. And all these countries use deep shaft mining, deep shaft mining as their method of acquiring uranium. Now, deep shaft mining causes huge problems for both the human aspect and the environmental aspect. For humans, it creates huge, dangerous working conditions. We have seen how China, the major leader in providing uranium, has actually resulted in 20,000 workers dying every year just for deep shaft mining in these situations. But it's not simply people dying, ladies and gentlemen. It's also the long term effects on the environment itself. No, thank you. And that's where we actually look even into countries like Russia where they actually use explosives to open up deep shafts. And what happens, ladies and gentlemen, they try using explosives in the Ural Mountain and actually cause tremors in surrounding cities, ladies and gentlemen. What we're talking about here today is that from the very fundamentals, at the very beginning of nuclear production, in trying to acquire nuclear ore, you already cause huge problems for the environment and the human aspect. But more importantly, now before I move on, yes, are you aware that some contracts for nuclear power plants run up until 2014? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we say that, okay, if there are existing projects, then let them run their course. What we're basically saying here is that it's absolutely unreasonable to say that we should cut off every single project and just deconstruct every single existing power plant. That's simply not feasible. What we say here today is that we abandon it by not starting anything new. That's very clear, ladies and gentlemen. So, going on with it. Now, the second point I'd like to bring to you is the idea of nuclear waste. What we're talking about here is that every time in the production process, you actually create biohazardous radioactive material. Now this material needs to be immediately dealt with every time you do it, or else it will cause huge environmental impacts. But no thank you sir, what we've seen from the international community is not a single country has been able to produce a proper facility to deal with it. We look at the case of the United States, the leader in trying to find a solution. And what happened ladies and gentlemen, the two major projects, the first one, Okiloto, uh, Okiloto is now overdue for five years and rapidly, no thank you sir, over budget. And the US government themselves have admitted that they don't expect to find a solution until 10 years later. The second major project was Yucca Mountain, where it took 12 years to build, and now it has been absolutely cancelled by the United States government. It's over budget, and they've found significant problems, no thank you sir, in actually trying to build this facility itself. So ladies and gentlemen, what we're seeing here is that the nuclear waste pro uh, produced by energy production through nuclear power plants can't be dealt with. And all of these radioactive materials, once leaked out of the atmosphere, will actually create huge problems for the rest of the world and goes directly against what we were trying to solve in the first place, and that is climate change. But it's not simply these long-term problems that happen in every single country. We also look into the most obvious thing, nuclear safety. But we say that the occasional risks, occasional accidents, actually cause irreparable damage to places such as Fukushima and Chernobyl. We have seen, as we have, I think everyone here would know, that in both of these cities, we have seen dead cities that can't uh, allow anyone to live in there anymore, ladies and gentlemen. 
We have seen how a single Fujishima incident has been able to crumble the Japanese economy. No, thank you, sir. We're not saying that these things will happen every day. What we're saying here today is that not only is the new introduction process causing long-term damage, it also has a huge risk of occasional damages that are irreparable, ladies and gentlemen. So based on this, we already say that nuclear energy is creating huge acts of harm. But there's still, still one thing that nuclear energy can hold on to, that is, it's energy efficient. Ladies and gentlemen, on side opposition, we don't even think that is true. That's why right now I'm going to tell you about renewable energy rising as a viable alternative. Now first of all, it's the idea of widespread ap application of kind of renewable energy. Now we say that the, from the very nature of a renewable energy, we say that it's a circumstantial. We say that it relies on environmental conditions and allows it to take advantage of those environmental conditions. Things like hydroelectric energy taking advantage of seawater, things like solar energy taking advantage of the sun. We say that because of this, it makes it so much more accessible to countries like uh, the developing countries specifically. And what have we seen there, Jessica? Before I go on, yes. Do you realize Germany is replacing its nuclear power plants with coal power plants? Because renewable energies are not, and will for the coming time not be, an alternative. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we say that even in the case of Germany, we don't really agree on full what they're doing. Because Germany is basically saying that they will deconstruct all their new nuclear power plants, and they're simply going to go for coal. Ladies and gentlemen, side opposition, we're not proposing that we immediately stop everything. What we're saying here today is that you should abandon all new projects, and you should just go for renewable energy, because it's ready, ladies and gentlemen. So going on with that. Now we've seen how the BRIC countries have increased significantly the funding for renewable energy. We've seen how China has emerged as a major leader, thank you sir, in terms of developing green energy. And even countries like Morocco have invested heavily in things like solar energy. And the most significant example I'd like to bring to today is Abu Dhabi, where the king actually came up and condemned nuclear energy itself. And they're now diverting $10 billion to creating a green energy city. And what is observation? They're now leading the world in terms of energy efficiency. Then you to the second point of green energy, the idea of technological advancement. We're seeing huge increases in efficiency in energy production and the lowering cost of energy production itself. We have seen how solar panels are able to double their efficiency in mere course of three years. Then you what does this prove? We have proved on side opposition today, come up here, telling you active long-term harm to the production process of nuclear energy, telling you about the occasional disasters that cause irreparable damage, but more importantly, how the only thing that nuclear energy can hold on to energy efficiency is quickly being replaced by renewable energy itself. Ladies and gentlemen, if all of these things combine to say that nuclear energy has no reason for existence and is causing long-term harm, it's time to abandon it. And that's why we're going back to